So in this video, we're going to learn as much Java as we can possibly squeeze into five minutes. So let's get started. So you can see we're starting off with just one file called learnjava.java. And like most programming tutorials, we're going to start with hello world. So if I run this, we'll see hello world printed to our screen. So just like we expected, we can see it down here. So classes are really important in Java because it's an object oriented programming language and every chunk of code in Java is going to live within some sort of class. Our hello world program prints hello world to the screen. So this is Java print method and we have this main function so the main function tells java where to start executing the program so java has variables like most programming languages so it has integers which let us store positive and negative whole numbers it has floats which let us store numbers with a decimal point in them uh, and those numbers have to have an f at the end that's just how java works we have doubles which are like floats except they let us store much bigger numbers and they don't need to have an f at the end and there are boolean values so they let us store true and false of course once we have numbers we can subtract them so we could say 10 minus 5 or we could say 10.5 divided by 2 or we could multiply this one by some sort of decimal but of course if we tried to divide the value true it wouldn't make any sense so if we tried to divide true by false that won't make any sense and we get an error if we try to divide it by a number it also doesn't make sense so java has another type that's built in which is a bit more complicated called strings so i could create a string like this just like how we created these primitive types but this type is called an object so now that we've looked at some basic data types let's look at if statements so an if statement in java works just like most programming languages if i said if one equals two that's clearly incorrect but we'll just try and print out some text anyway so if we just run this we get what we'd expect and our ide is actually smart enough to tell us that this if statement will never be true so java also has methods this is an example of a method here and we're going to create another one so we'll create a method that returns a boolean value and so what this method does is it takes some input which is the number that we give it and it returns true or false depending on whether the number is true or not and we get this red underline because this method isn't static we're going to learn about that in a minute but for now we'll just set that method to static and you can see we get true so now we're going to learn about object so to create an object we first need to create a class so i'm going to create a class called dog and we're going to create lots of objects that represent dogs so when we create an object so we have to say what the object's going to look like and we do that in the class so we're going to say that this object has two values that dog's going to have a name and an age and we want to set those values when we create our object so in our class we have to tell java how we're going to do that so java has something called a constructor which is a special method which shares the name of its class so we're going to pass in the name and an age for the dog so this code says when we create an object we want to go to that object's name and we want to set it equal to the value that we pass into our method so let's create a dog object so here is how we create an object in java just like we would create an int we have to specify the type of our object we have to give our object a name and the thing that's slightly different about objects is we have to use the new keyword to create them so we use the new keyword and then we tell it we want to call that dog method that we created here so if we run this we can print out our object so this is what our object looks like we're seeing that it's a dog object and it's stored in this memory address so now that we have a dog object i could set my dog dot and i could get the name and the age of our dog so if i got the age value we could print that out and you can see we get our dog's age so java is object oriented and one of the concepts of object oriented programming that java encourages is called encapsulation so java would rather we didn't access these fields directly it would rather we used a getter and a setter so the ide will do it for me but if i just type the word get we can see that it wants to create these getters and setters for us so here's our setter so what we're doing here is we're storing one dog in this variable but what if i wanted to store multiple dog objects so to create an array in java all i do is i say i want to create a dog like before but i put these two square brackets after the word dog which tells java i want to create an array and an array is an object so again i have to use the new keyword so this is how we create an array in java say i wanted to create an array and i didn't want to give it its values at this point in time so this says i want an array of 10 dogs but there aren't any dogs in our array yet so let's load up our array with some dogs so to do that we're going to use a loop so this is called a for loop in java and this lets us do something repeatedly so what we're going to do is i'm going to add dog objects to our array so our array has 10 spaces and so to access one of those spaces i tell the array which space i want so if i want the first space i use the number zero if i want the second space i use the number one or in our case since it's a loop i want the space to change as the loop executes so i put in the number i because that's the number that's changing each time we iterate our loop and so what we're doing is we're creating an array full of dog objects but all the dogs are the same so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a plus there and we're going to add on the value of i just so that each of our dog objects is different and then we're going to copy our loop and we're going to print it down here so down here we're going to print out the age of each of our dogs and we're going to use our getter so let's run this 
As you can see, we just get a load of numbers printed out, but these are the ages of each of the dogs. So what if we had different types of animals and we wanted to store different types of animals in an array? What would happen then? So if we create a cat class, how would I store cats and dogs in our array? If I wanted to store cats in our dog array, you can see we get a type error. And that's because cats and dogs are different types. So there are two ways we can fix this in Java. We can use inheritance or we can use what's called composition. So let's try inheritance first. So we can create an animal class and then we can go to our cat class and say that it extends our animal class. And we can do the same to our dog class. And now cat and dog both share the same type called animal. So in our array now, I can create an array of animals rather than dogs. And now look what happens. We can store our cats in our array array with our dogs. So another way we can solve this issue is we can use what are called interfaces. So if I create an animal interface and instead of extending the animal class we're going to say implements the animal interface and once again the error disappears. But let's make proper use of our interface. So inside our animal interface create our method. I'm going to call it speak and that's all we need to do. We don't need to implement the method. All we need to do is tell Java what the method looks like and in each of our classes what we need to do is we need to implement that method. So when a cat speaks we're going to say that cat does that and when a dog speaks it's going to say that. We have an array of objects that can speak so so long as an object has the ability to speak it can go inside our array. So if we just loop through our array again and we call that special speak method and what we'll do is we'll store cats and dogs in the array. We'll use our is equal method again that should be is even. So if is even then we're going to store a cat otherwise we're going to store a dog. And now if we run this you can see we get a cat there then a dog then a cat then a dog. So we saw static methods earlier so this is a static method and what it does is it lets us call a method without creating an object of the class first. So say in our cat class, say we wanted to create a method called walk and say it just prints out walking. Because the method's static inside of our main function, what I can do is I could say cat.walk and we can call that method directly on our class. But if I don't specify that the method is static, say I just leave it like that. Now we need to create a cat object to be able to call that method and we get this error. So what we'd have to do is say create a new cat, give the cat a name and an age, and then we can call the walk method. So as well as for loops, Java has while loops. So we can create a loop called a while loop and this will loop for as long as a condition is true. So if I said while true, our while loop would actually run forever because this would never not be true. So what I'll do is I will print that out. And what we'll see is we will get an infinite loop of hello worlds printed out. And it's gonna keep doing that forever. In Java, we can create comments. So this is a comment. This is a line of code that won't be executed. It's just there for our benefit. We can also create multi-line comments like this. We can also use some of Java's built-in data structures. For example, Java has a map data structure. So let's create a map, mapping strings to strings. And you can see Java has lots of different types that we could use, but we're gonna use a hash map. We could have used any type that implements this map interface. So this is another common thing you'll see in Java. We could have said hash map up here, but the preferred way to do it in Java is to specify an interface over here, which means later on, if we ever came along and wanted to swap out the implementation and we wanted to swap this hash map for a different kind of map, our code would still work. So we can make use of Java's built-in hash map and we can store objects in our map. And then later on, if I wanted to pull that value out of the map and I would say, get the item with the key, hello. You can see we get the word world because what we did was we mapped the word hello to the word world. So Java has loads and loads of different data structures we can use. So as well as a hash map, we could have a concurrent hash map. So if we were doing concurrent programming with threads and we didn't want to worry about race conditions, all we have to do is swap our hash map for a concurrent one. And in one line of code, we change our hash map to one that won't create race conditions. Another really good property of Java is that any code you write should run pretty much anywhere. And finally, what we're going to learn about is packages or programming is starting to get bigger and what we can do in Java is we can break that code up into packages. So in our dog class we can break it up into a package. Let's call the package org.howcode. People usually use their domain name and they reverse it. You can see it just makes our code a bit neater. Now if I want to create a dog, Java doesn't actually know where a dog is because it's in a different package. So if we just import our dog class. You can see up here we've imported. So from this package we've imported this class and then we can use it as we did before. So that's a quick look at Java. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe and I'll see you next time.